Welcome to the first pick computing video for A level computing and in this video we're going to look at computer systems and this is the very very basic uh, start to the A level computing. If you're studying A level computing then you're probably already a little bit of an expert on computer systems. You'll know that a computer system might look like this but it also has things going on on the monitor and that's our software you'll probably already know that computer systems are just about everywhere on devices such as smartphones or com uh, tablet PCs such as iPads but also on games consoles such as Xboxes and even our household devices such as washing machines are computer systems. So what will you need to know for the A-level computing on computer systems? Well, you need to be able to categorize different elements of computer systems, define different terms ready for an exam, define the purpose of the different elements of a computer system, and you'll need to know a whole lot more in the future. But for this video today, we're just keeping it basic. First of all, hardware. That's our first category of elements for computer systems. So we know that hardware might look like this and it's something that we can touch and feel or even put our hand through if we want to is a real physical device. Software on the other hand, well examples of software might be Microsoft Word or a web browser or even the interface to an ATM, auto teller machine, cash machine. Software is one of these mystical, ethereal things that we just can't touch and we can't pick up or carry away. It might look like the person operating the cash machine is touching the software, but they're not. They're actually touching a screen, a monitor, aren't they? We can't physically touch software. It's virtual. Hardware. Uh, can be categorized into two further categories and the first is the computer and that's the box that we see might be referred to as a desktop or a tower or I like to call it a unit some people like to call it a CPU but I don't like to call it a CPU because that can com confuse people with uh, the more precise meaning of CPU central processing unit or the processor which we'll look at uh, in much more detail in a future video the other subcategory that we can um, place on hardware is peripherals and those are all the things that we can attach to our computer such as monitors, keyboards, mice, printers etc. Peripherals, the things we attach to computers can be divided into three further categories input devices, output devices and storage devices. Input devices are the bits of hardware that we use to input things into the computer. There's the two most commonly used, keyboard and mouse. The way I like to remember input devices, well some people will say that they will type stuff up, but I'll say that I'm going to type things in to a computer and that helps me remember it's an input device if we use the word in. Another example of an input device is a scanner for getting pictures into our computer and we always say that we're going to scan something in there's another example of an input device, a graphics tablet. Whatever we draw on that tablet appears on our screen, doesn't it? So we're putting our drawing into the computer. Output devices, these show us information. They show us what the computer has done. So the most commonly used one is the monitor. And a large version of a monitor might be a whiteboard. This is an easy one to remember, the printer. We always say we're going to print stuff out aren't we? It's an output device. Another example where we don't actually see something happening but we hear it is speakers. We get sound out of speakers. A commonly overlooked output device might be the motor where a computer uh, makes the motor do something, the motor gives off energy and can operate something such as a washing machine, keep our clothes nice and clean. 
The third category is storage devices. We need to be able to store data and store files once a computer has been switched off. And that's what storage devices are for. So an example of a storage device is a hard drive. But a hard drive is an internal component of a computer. So it's not a peripheral. An external hard drive would be an example of peripheral. Other storage devices might be things like DVDs or CDs. USB data sticks or even SD cards. There are misconceptions about certain devices and certain peripherals as to which uh, category input output storage they should fit into. The webcam for instance lots of people believe webcam is an output device because we get our image from it but we don't because the image actually appears doesn't it on a monitor. The webcam our image goes into the webcam and into the computer. Other misconceptions might surround things such as smartphones, tablet PCs, or even interactive whiteboards. We can see that the man using the interactive whiteboard is actually writing on it. So does that make it an output device or an input device? And it's the same with a smartphone or a tablet PC. What category do they actually fit into? Input, output, or storage? Have a think about that. Onto software. Two categories for software. And the first is operating system, which we might also know as system software. And the second is applications. Operating systems or system software, these are the software that's already on a computer when we start using it. So examples would be Microsoft Windows or Linux or Apple Mac. And we can't use a computer, really, without an operating system on it. So like I say, they often come pre-installed when you buy the computer. Um, and we can't have programs such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc. on the computer without an operating system. This lucky person has got a MacBook which they can load up whichever operating system they want at the time they switch on their computer. The main job of an operating system is to be able to communicate with hardware to make things happen. There are other jobs as well and we'll look at operating systems in much more detail in future videos. Application software. Some examples of application software might be Word which we might use to make uh, a report, uh, Google Chrome web browser to be able to view web pages or an Excel spreadsheet for creating a finance model. Now application software go on top of our operating system we can't put applications onto the computer until we've got an operating system and applications just allow us to do useful jobs the term apps came around with devices such as smartphones and tablet PCs where we um, have maybe cut down smaller versions of larger applications this diagram might help explain the things that we've looked at in this video a little bit more for you. Thanks for watching.